Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. That there, Mrs. Norton, is the courthouse of Nutmeg County. It's like a nice, quiet old building. I like all the ivy. You'd be surprised. Some of the exciting cases we've heard tried in that courthouse, Mrs. Norton. Maybe you wouldn't think it was such a quiet old place if you had. What did he say, young woman? Did he say he's the biggest thing in a lawyer to come out of New England since Daniel Webster? No, he didn't exactly say that at all, Miss Tucker. Thank you, Mr. Norton. How's that? No, he didn't say it. Listen, son, that does not mean he wasn't thinking it. Delilah Tucker, I fail to see any reason why these good people and quantum neighbors of mine should be attendant upon the Billingsgate and Orger, which you see fit to hurl upon me for reasons known only to you. I can't hear a word he said, Miss Norton, but I bet you he sounds more like Daniel Webster than Daniel Webster did himself. <laughs> what have you got against me, Miss Tucker? I've represented you and your brother faithfully as an attorney for 30 years. Maybe more, maybe less. That's all I've got against you, Rupert Hankins. You're a lawyer. That's right. And the title company lawyer is going to meet us in the county clerk's office in an hour, maybe. At least that's what he said on the telephone. You're not in no more of a hurry than I am, Rupert Hankins. I've got to go home and mash Jed's potatoes. Danged if he didn't lose his teeth in the middle of arguing with me. Uh, we can't let you go yet, Delilah Tucker. You've got to hand over the deed in front of witnesses. Rupert Hankins, I'd really like to know if you think I heard that. As a member of the bar in good standing of this county, Delilah, I don't theorize on things I don't know about. Maybe. I hope you can stop fighting long enough to get all this done. Fighting? What'd she say? She said we were fighting. Well, if that doesn't beat all, Rupert Hankins and I have been friends for 60 years and ain't said a nice word to each other yet. But who calls that fighting? Step right in here. We'll have this settled in a minute, it's maybe. It's been settled for hours. It hasn't been settled yet in the eyes of the law, meaning Mr. Hankins here. Rupert Hankins, here's your deed. Mm -hmm. uh, not so fast, Delilah. Let me take a good look at this. I want to be sure that it's a proper deed. But you wrote it yourself. Yes, but that was as your representative. At this moment, I'm representing the Nortons. I don't think that's fair, Mr. Haggard. You're supposed to be representing the Tuckers, too. I'll take care of my other clients in due course, Mrs. Norton. Uh, situated along the east side of the road, commonly known as... Um, that uh, sounds all right. Now, let's just pick another part, uh, maybe. Um, and... Following the line due south for a distance of seven rods, sixteen and two tenths feet, to a certain rock, commonly known as King William's Rock, and from thence seventeen degrees east to a point. What is uh, all this? This is our house. Uh, doesn't sound like it. Are you sure? That's it, all right. Did you know we had King William's Rock on our land? Why? Everybody knows that. It says so. I wonder why they call it that. Well, probably because it looks like King William. Who is he? Or is he? Probably some Indian. Maybe his ghost lives underneath the rock. Ghosts? You mean we're going to have ghosts, too? Oh, no, this farm comes completely equipped. I bet there's a skeleton in every closet and a draft in every eave. What's an eave? Something that drops. <clears throat> this is an excellent deed. Covers the situation perfectly. We accept it. We ought to, Rupert. You wrote it. The part of it that isn't printed, and I'm ready to wager you copied that off something else anyhow. Uh, on behalf of my clients, Mr. and Mrs. Norton, we accept this deed as properly executed, exclusive, and binding. Now, on behalf of my clients, the Tuckers, the sellers of this property, I would like to see the buyer's payment. 
Mr. Hankins, I herewith and heretofore and notwithstanding and thus present you with a duly certified check in the amount called for in the contract of sale herein before mentioned. Mm -hmm. Seems perfectly satisfactory to me, Mr. Norton. And I urge my client, Miss Tucker, to accept it forthwith. I do. I congratulate all of you. On having a good lawyer? <laughs> I'm going on home to find Jed's teeth and mash his potatoes. As for you two... Yes, Miss Tucker? Hope you can move in before spring. Like you to be all settled before the dogwood come out. We got some right pretty dogwood on our place. And you can come and see it. And I'll give you some of my bulberry jelly. Well... Goodbye, and I'll tell Jed you asked for him. Please do say hello. And uh, many, many thanks. Thanks, but couldn't matter none. You didn't have to say that. <laughs> I'd have said it anyway myself. Goodbye, and as for you, Rupert Hankin, I'll be seeing you. Goodbye, Miss Tucker. Well, she's all right, isn't she? I think she's wonderful. She's just like an egg. Hard outside, but all soft underneath. Maybe. One of the crankiest good women we've got in this county. Well, sir, now that you are a landowner of Nutmeg County, it behooves us to go upstairs and have the said fact properly recorded with the responsible party. Who's the responsible party? Mr. Ephraim Hankins, the deputy county clerk. Hankins? Is he related to you, Mr. Hankins? Not uh, close, like the sheriff and the judge. He's just a cousin this way, Mr. and Mrs. Norton. Right through this door. David, I don't think anybody's done a deed in years. It doesn't look as though anybody's ever been here. Do not do a deed. What do you do? You execute it. Poor little deed. <clears throat> Mrs. Norton, I'd like you to meet the Honorable Ephraim Hankins. How do you do, Mr. Hankins? Hello, Mrs. Norton. And that, I take it, is Mr. Norton. Correct. And how do you do, Mr. Hank? I'm doing fine, thank you, just fine. But the rest of this place is still on his feet. Are you really the other Mr. Hankins' cousin? He certainly is. Well, I must say, you don't sound alike. Well, you don't think we Hankins are born old, do you? <laughs> What's the trouble, Rupert? You've been giving these nice people the Civil War treatment? I'll bet you've got them thinking we're still using horses and buggies up here. I'll thank you, Ephraim, to keep a civil tongue in your head. <laughs> don't let him kid you, Mr. and Mrs. Norton. This is Connecticut. We're only about an hour from New York. We've got automobiles and movies, and most of us read newspapers, and we even listen to the radio. I assume as much. Of course, there is a certain conservative element in the community, of which my cousin Rupert Hankins, your attorney, is a conspicuous example. Maybe. If conservative means that I'm suspicious of you and what you stand for, then you hit the nail right on the head, Ephraim. Ah. Get on with your business and stop sitting here in your office reading magazines and influencing people and tying trout flies. We'll have plenty of time for fishing next spring. I never have enough time for fishing. Do you, Mr. Norton? Well, I'm something of a fisherman, Mr. Hankins. Are you? You never told me. Want your money back? Mm, I do not. I'd rather have you than any old fish I ever saw. Well, not meaning to cast dispersions on your choice, Mrs. Norton. But have you ever seen a nice rainbow trout first thing on a sunny morning? Ah, ah. Time's a waste in Ephraim. Get this deed registered. Let Mr. and Mrs. Norton get out of here before you start telling them all your fish stories. Well, maybe they'd like to hear them, Cousin Rupert. What do you think of that? I don't think anything of it. And I really don't care what you do think. Now, uh, where's this deed? Right here. Hmm. Well, look fine to me. That'll be a $2 fee to register it in the proper book and page. $2. Uh, here you are, Mr. Hankins. Thank you. Now I'll write out your receipt and duly stamp it. Need any help, maybe? Only been doing it for three years. Thank you, Cousin Rupert. I think I can manage without you. Oh, so official, isn't it? It's worse than having a baby. Don't think there isn't any red tape about that, too. Is there? Well, I'll say there is. Haven't you ever seen your birth certificate? Do I have one? If you were born, you do. Maybe I wasn't. Do you think that's possible? Oh, sure. In fact, that explains a lot of things that I can't explain any other way. Say, what sort of things? Uh, no time for that now. I, I can see that Mr. Hankins is practically finished with his receipt. I am finished, Mr. Norton. Now just let me stamp it, and we'll be all set. You know, some of us try to make these things as brief as possible. Others get involved. Your job, Ephraim, is to stamp. 
You will kindly leave the speeches to me. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Hankins. You're welcome. Oh, then Fine. it's all Fine. over, and we really own the house. We do? Here, you take the deed. After all, you did most of the fighting for it. I think you ought to hold it, David. You ought to carry the deed over the threshold. Isn't that what people usually do, Mr. Hankins? Now, why don't you let me keep it for you in my safe? I usually keep all my clients' deeds. That's a wonderful idea. Well, I guess that's that. How do you feel? Me? I don't know. How do you feel? I don't know either. I expected to feel so much that now that everything's settled, I feel a little let down. Me too. Where do we move in now? Start living up here. Then there won't be any letdowns. I know. There won't be any time for it. It's a beautiful, beautiful house. Wait till you start living here. That's just exactly what I wanted to say to you, Mr. and Mrs. Norton. What? Well, I want to welcome you and Mr. Norton to Nutmeg County. We're getting a lot of New York people up here, and we hope you're going to feel at home. Well, we're going to be farming our place, you know, Mr. Hankin. Fine, fine. We've got a progressive little community here with a first-rate chamber of commerce and some great boosters in the Lions Club. We'll be glad to have you come to our lunches, Mr. Norton. Well, that's uh, very nice of you, Mr. Hankins. We've uh, uh, we've got a lot of stick in the muds up here, but we've also got some live wires of the type that you're used to, Mr. Norton. Maybe he is, and maybe he ain't. I just want Mr. Norton to know this because he's going to be a resident and voter of Nutmeg County. And uh, he'll be here for the next year's elections. My cousin fancies himself as chief county clerk, Mr. Norton, but you are under no obligation to vote for him. Of course he isn't under ab- any obligation. You get me so confused, no I can't even talk to how you vote, Mr. Norton. And, Mrs. Norton, you are very welcome in Connecticut. We trust you'll be happy here. I know we're going to be happy, aren't we? Everybody's so nice since we bought the house. Yes, they certainly have been. Just think of it. Delilah Tucker is going to give us bogberry jelly. And Rupert Hankins, the guardian of the law, is the guardian of our deed. And Ephraim's asking us to vote for him for county clerk. I'm going to, too, aren't you? And it's uh, only in Connecticut that men are such flatterers that after one look at you, they decide you're old enough to vote. But, David, I will be in another three years. And by that time, I can vote for Ephraim Hankins to be governor. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Which house comes out first in the popularity polls? That's easy. It's the house where there's always plenty of ice-cold Coke. Nobody can resist the hospitality that comes from a refrigerator stocked with Coca-Cola. Say, have a Coke, and presto, your guests are enjoying the pause that refreshes. The pause that's welcome in any gathering, anywhere. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause... The pause that refreshes. Mm-hmm.